שלום everybody, we're going to do the counting of our merit for today. ברוך אתה יורא אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו וציוונו על ספירת האומר היום יום שלוש. Blessed are you, you are Elu, a king of the universe who has commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day three. Shalom, beloved of the king. As we continue with our counting of the Omer, and as we are counting the Omer and we are reading Jeremiah, and tonight we will look at Jeremiah chapter 5. And so we read Jeremiah chapter 5, diligently search the streets of Jerusalem, and please look and know and seek in her open places. If you find a man, if there is anyone doing right ruling, seeking the truth, then I shall pardon her. So yeah, we see already Father is seeking for those who are seeking truth. So Father is looking through the streets, not for one who is seeking religion, not for one who is seeking all these, this knowledge, but for one who is seeking truth in his word. And that's why the word says, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. That's why the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, Yes, we're going to get there when he turns around and he says, for the one who's going to seek with all their heart, they will be found by him. We need to be seeking him with all our heart. When we're going to seek him, we will find him when we seek for him with our, our whole heart. And so that is why he's looking for those who are truly doing right ruling, what is right ruling? Keeping his right ways, keeping his way, keeping his Torah way, keeping his commands, and for the one who is truly seeking truth. Working through their Bible, looking to see, are we following man-made customs and traditions? Are we still following what rabbis say? Are we still following what pastors say? Or are we truly going back to the word and seeking truth from the word even when they say as Yahuwah lives they swear falsely for certain so you see father looks at the heart and father sees all things and father sees if we truly are seeking him wholeheartedly in truth oh Yahuwah are your eyes not on truth so you see father's eyes are on those that are truth seeking truth and if we have a look at revelation chapter 3 when we looked at the church of philadelphia how does Yeshua, how does he present himself in revelation chapter 3 the church of philadelphia that everyone wants to turn around and be part of the church of philadelphia but what is the criteria for those of the church of philadelphia because to the church of Philadelphia, he presents himself as he who is set apart, he who is true. So you see, there needs to be truth in the innermost parts because he wants truth. And so we must understand the church of Philadelphia are those that guard his word and do not deny his name. And so that is the, the importance there. So he says, O Yahuwah, are your eyes not on truth? You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. So you see, Father brings things into our lives for us to be able to bow our knee and repent when there is calamity that comes against us and hardships that come against us and many things that come against us. It's to bring us back to a place of where we can humble ourselves on our knees and turn back to him. You have consumed them, but they have refused to receive instruction. So do you see, are we those that are so hardened of heart that we're not willing to receive instruction? Not only the instruction of the word, 
but the instruction of the spoken word that he will speak and say, this is the way, walk you in it. This is what I want you to do. But how many times we will rebel against him because we don't want the, the, the narrow path. We want the broad way. For they have not known the way of Yahuwah. So he says, you have consumed them, but they have refused to receive instruction. Sorry, verse 3. They have re refused to receive instruction. They made their faces stronger than rock. They refused to turn back. Now is that the hardness of our heart? That Father is knocking on our door? And that is why I say, Father gave us time. Even at the beginning of 2020, as this pandemic hit, what did he do? He allowed us to be able to go throughout all those things in our lives. He removed the addictions out of our lives. All the idols that we were turning to, be it the idol of sport, be it the idol of alcohol, be it the idol of smoking, be it the idol of um, all this, you know, uh, recreation that we would be about. He removed everything from us so that we would humble ourselves under his mighty hand, submitting to him, turning back to him, turning to his word, turning to his way. He even made sure that he closed all the churches so that the people could now come back to him and reading his word and coming back and praying to him. But what did they do? They refused to turn back. Why? Because if we are two years down the line, we are exactly two years down the line from when the pandemic started. And if you look at where people are now, it's like they are back to where they left off before the pandemic. Then I said, these are only the poor. They have been foolish, for they have not known the way of Yahuwah, the right ruling of their law. So you see, it's the poor and the wretched that he speaks about in the church of Laodicea, the poor the wretched, the blind, those who are deaf, those who will not listen, those who will not repent, those who will need to be able to go by myself, those who need to be able to be refined by the fire. And for what? Because they did not know the way of Yahuwah. They did not know his way, his precepts, his ordinances, his commands, his Torah, to be able to walk in the right ruling that he has given. Let me go to the great men and speak to them, for they have known the way of Yahuwah, the right ruling of their Elua, but these have altogether broken the yoke and torn off the bonds. So you see, why is the judgment coming? Because man has gone their own way. Man has become a god unto themselves. Man has put themselves on, an, on, the, on the throne of where the father should be the one who's on the throne of their lives. But we go our own ways and we do our own thing because we do not want to submit to the father. So when people look and they think idols, they automatically think the idolatry of like a Catholic church. But the biggest idol that is on the throne is the idol of I, because I do not want to submit to the Father and to his ways. Therefore, a lion from the forest shall strike them, a wolf from the desert ravage them, a leopard is watching over their cities, whoever comes out of them is torn in pieces, for their transgressions have been many, their backslidings have been numerous. And so you see, until we truly come to that place of where we come and we walk after Yahshua in spirit and in truth, there's constant backsliding. And that's why in the church, that's what we see, backsliding constantly, people turning away from the Father, where they are not hot, fervor for him, but they are lukewarm, the church of Laodicea. Why should I pardon you for this? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by those that are not mighty ones. When I had filled them up, they then committed adultery and they thronged to the house of a whore. So you see, we really can put ourselves in this place in having to repent and say, Father, forgive us. 
for we have gone astray. Our forefathers have gone astray. Our forefathers did not know your way. And therefore we have just followed from generation to generation like our forefathers being able to be in religious systems that profit us nothing and we just continue to commit adultery against the Father. And we serve other mighty ones apart from serving him alone. And those mighty ones can come in different shapes and forms. Whoever, whatever you put above the Father, whatever you will be able to neglect him for that thing, it is an idol. They were like well-fed horses, everyone made after their neighbor's wife. Would I not punish them for this, declares Yahuwah, and would I not revenge myself on such a nation? Now we must understand that there's going to come a time when he's going to have to act as a righteous judge because he cannot continue to allow the world to continue to go on its path the way that it is right now. He will judge the people. He's going to judge the nations. That's why he's speaking right now, saying that his judgments are about to be unleashed. His judgments have already started to be unleashed. Go up, say, go up on her walls and destroy, but do not make a complete end. Take away her branches, for they do not belong to Yahuwah. For the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda have utterly betrayed me declares Yehoah. So you see, Yahab is standing and he's looking at the house of Judah, which today would basically represent the Jews. And they don't follow him. They also do lip service for him. They do a lot of customs and traditions, works of the flesh, but they don't truly follow him in spirit and in truth. Then you've got a church which will represent Israel, those that have been grafted in. And so we pride ourselves as those that are grafted in. But truly, do we serve the Father the way he wants to be served? Do we follow after him? Do we submit ourselves to him? Do we follow his ways and his Torah and to follow his spoken word, his written word? Do we follow that way? Which way do we follow? Because at the end of the day, that is what he's wanting. There's just a scripture coming up inside of me now that I just want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 13 because this is such a powerful scripture and this is the scripture that he would say to us in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 4. If we really want to know the Father's heart, this is what he says in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 4. Walk after Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Fear him, God, and God his commands, and obey his voice, and serve him, and cling to him. That is the people that he is looking for. That is going to be the true house of Israel, the fullness of those that he's now raising up his house, not this man-made house that these people want to take a bunch of Jews and a bunch of Messianic people and bring them together and say, we are of the house of Ephraim and this is the house of Judah and now we're going to start building a house. No, no, no. Father's raising up his people. And this is the criteria. And the criteria is coming from Deuteronomy 13 verses 4. Walk after Yahuwah, your Lua, and fear him and guard his commands, and obey his voice, and serve him, and cling to him. And this is the kind of people we ought to be, not those that have betrayed him. We continue to read in, Deut in Jeremiah 5 from verses 12, and it says, And they have been untrue to Yahuwah, and said, It is not he, no evil comes upon us, nor do we see sword or scarcity of food? Now I want you to understand, beloveds of the king, this is exactly where we are today because the Christians will turn around and say, no, 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 that no evil 
is going to come upon us. Nor will we see the sword. We will not come under the sword. And nor will we go through scarcity of food. And this is exactly what he's saying. They have been untrue to Yahuwah and said. So you see, right now, we think that we can serve him however we want. And yet, we will not see any evil come upon us. We will not see the sword and we will not see scarcity of food because we are the blessed and we do everything right. Now we need to repent so that we do not see these things. Verse 13, And the prophets have become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall be done to them. So understand, then the prophets prophesy peace and prosperity. This is what the prophets are prophesying. Peace and prosperity, nothing is going to befall us. It's just he wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He doesn't want you to be able to turn from your wicked ways in any way. Why should you? Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, Alua of hosts, because you speak this word, see, I am making my words in your mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. So you see, Father is going to raise up his true prophets that are going to have fire in their mouths and that word that's going to come is going to come forth with fire that's going to burn to their hearts because their hearts is like wood and it needs to burn with his fire of the truth of his word. See, I'm bringing a nation against you from afar. O house of Israel, declares Yahuwah, it is an enduring nation it is an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know, nor do you understand what they say. So you see, destruction is coming. And so we must understand, this is this Babel that goes back to the time. He, the nation was, Babel was going, Babylon was going, they were going to go into exile into Babylon. And Babylon is again what is represented in the Tower of Babel, which is exactly what is represented in the book of Revelation when he says, come out of Babylon, which is this world and world religion and world system, the beast system that we need to get out of. And he says in verse 16. Their quiver is like an open burial site. All of them are mighty men. So you see, Father is going to have those that is going to, you must understand, there is going to be upheaval. These things are written in the Bible. They're written in the Word. Even in Matthew chapter 24, even in the book of Revelation, these things are going to come. Nation will turn against nation. And there will be pestilence and there will be disease and there will be scarcities of food and there will be many earthquakes, all the things that we already see going on now. And they shall eat up your harvest and your bread, which your sons and daughters shall eat. They shall eat up your flocks and your herds. They shall eat up your vines and your fig trees with the sword. They shall demolish your walled cities in which you are trusting. So you see, what are we trusting in? Do we trust in our resources? Do we trust in our houses that we are in right now? The father might say to you, pack your bag, it's time for you to go. Come out of that job, pack your bag, you need to go. You need to flee to the mountains. But if you're going to not hear his voice and get out when he tells you to get out, then you must understand that destruction is going to come upon you because now is an hour that we need to hear his voice. But even in those days, declares Yahuwah, I shall not make a complete end of you. So you see, he's so merciful because he will always have a remnant. And even when they went into Babylon, he still had a remnant. He had people, faithful servants, like Daniel that was faithful and like the three Hebrew boys that were with him that were faithful, he still had faithfulness. Those who were not going to bow. He had a faithful Esther that was not going to bow. He had Ezra, Nehemiah that eventually came out of Babylon as well. 
He had faithful servants. Ezra was a mighty priest in his time to be able to raise up the people to prepare them to come back into Jerusalem. And it shall be when they say, Why does Yahuwah our Lord do all this to us? Then you shall answer them, As you have forsaken me and served foreign mighty ones in your land, so you shall serve foreigners in a land that is not yours. So you see, Father is very adamant in what he does. And if we're going to continue to come up against him, you must understand that we will have the destruction that is going to come upon us because at the end of the day, everything he does is to show you who he is. Declare this in the house of Yaakov and proclaim it in Yehuda, saying, Hear this now, O foolish people, without heart, who have eyes and see not, who have ears and hear not. So you see, there's no Shema. There's no Shema. There's no change. There's no obedience. They have ears, but they will not hear what the Father says. They have eyes, but they will not want to be able to see what the Father wants to show them. That's why he said to Jeremiah, what do you see, Jeremiah? What do you see? And that is why Father wants to show us what he wants to reveal. But we do not want to see because many of us do not even want to hear that calamity is going to come upon us. And so we shut all of that out. Your shutting it out is not going to stop what he's already said. Because it makes us foolish people. That's what it does. Do you not fear me, declares Yahuwah? Do you not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand as the boundary of the sea by an everlasting law, and it does not pass over it? Though its waves toss to and fro, they are not able. Though they roar, they do not pass over it. You see, because one who's going to be tossed backwards and forwards, it's the one being tossed with every wind of doctrine that comes their way. They do not have their feet solid on the rock. They are tossed backwards and forwards by every wind of doctrine. And they're still chasing this and chasing that, all chasing of the wind. That's not going to bring any deliverance in the end. But this people has a backsliding and a rebellious heart. Is that who we are? Are we backsliding? Do we have a rebellious heart? Are we calloused of heart? Are we hard of heart? They have turned aside and gone astray. Is that what we're doing? Have we turned aside? Have we gone astray? Because this is what the Father is saying. These people have backslidden. These people have a rebellious heart. These people have turned aside and gone away. They go their own way. They, they, they do their own righteous acts. They think because they do all these little religious things, it's pleasing to him because now I go to church, because now I sing my little songs, because now I do all these manifestations of my flesh and these are the things that are pleasing to him. The father says, I do not want your sacrifices. I want your obedience. He wants Shema. And they do not say in their heart, let us now fear Yahuwah. So you see, what is it that is the number one thing that we need to be doing? Fearing Yahuwah, because when we fear him, we will understand he is a righteous judge. He's not just a loving father, but he is a righteous judge that is going to judge our wayward ways. Just like a father, an, an earthly father, is not going to allow the rebellious child to continue in rebellion. They will have to discipline the child. So he says, who gives, let us now fear Yahuwah our Lua, who gives rain, both the former and the latter. In its season, he guards for us the required bylaw weeks of the harvest. Your crookedness have turned these, these away and your sins have kept the good from you. So you see, Father wants to do us good, but our sins keep that good away from him. And so we want to demand and we want to command, but we do not want to submit. So before we demand and command, let us first humble and submit.
and repent. For among my people are found wrong men who lie in wait as one who sets snares. They have set up a trap. They catch men. You see, who are those? Those hirelings, the ones that are going to speak treacherous things in your ears to lead you astray. Those that are going to lead the people of Yahuwah astray along the broad way to say, oh, but the father's not going to do that. This is what these false prophets were saying. The father is not going to bring judgment upon us. We are his chosen people. Do you not understand? But yet we think we can continue in our wicked ways and the father's not going to judge anything. Verse 27, as a cage is filled with birds, so their houses are filled with deceit. Therefore, they have become great and grown rich. You see, is that not exactly where we are today? This prosperity gospel that, it, that is being preached at the moment, a prosperity gospel of the fact that we are rich, we need nothing. The church of Laodicea, we are rich, we are wretched, we are poor, we are blind, we need nothing. And this is exactly where we are today because the Father is prospering me. They have become fat. You see the fat cats. They are like fat cats that sit in pews and become fat in all the knowledge that they acquire yet at the end of the day are not willing to surrender and submit. They are sleek. They also overlook the deeds of the wrong. So you see, then we excuse all these things. We don't call a spade a spade anymore. We don't call sin, sin anymore. No, no, no. Let's just say, oh, no, you know what? The Father is love. So it's okay. We will continue with gay parades in Jerusalem. We will continue with gay and all these, these abominations in the land of Israel. But understand something. It's his promised land. It's his chosen people. He's not going to judge them. Not at all. You've got to be joking. Our father is a righteous judge and his judgments are coming. And he says, they have become fat. They are sleek. They also overlook the deeds of the wrong. They did not rightly rule the cause of the fatherless, so they prosper. And the right of the needy, they did not rightly rule. So you see, we need to understand that we need to look to those, we need to be able to be about the Father's kingdom for those that are the fatherless, for those that are the needy, for those that are going to need Abba Yahuwah. Because he's not going to go to those that are all religious. He's going to go find himself a people. That's what he did in the wilderness. Remember, he didn't take those Israelites into the wilderness. He allowed them to dwell in the wilderness for 40 years and allowed them to bring forth a new, a new breed, an, a, a new generation, 20 years and younger, that he was going to take into the promised land. And the right of the needy they did not rightly rule. Would I not punish them for this? Declares Yahuwah. Would I not revenge myself on such a nation as this? An astounding and horrible matter has come to be in the land. So you see, you must understand that even today we want to exalt this land of Israel and we want to say, oh, the chosen people and the chosen land. But we must understand that is his promised land, but it's not a holy land. It's far from holy. There's many abominations in that land, and he's going to judge those people. And we, can, we cannot excuse the sin of people because Father is righteous, and he will not allow people to continue to make a mockery out of who he is and without him bringing us, remember, his judgments are his mercy. To be able to put forth his right, righteous right rulings. Now look and see, he says, that an astounding and horrible matter has come to be in the land. The prophets have prophesied falsely. And the priests rule by their own hand. And my people have loved it so. And what are you going to do at the end of it? So you see how sad. 
Because the prophets, instead of them being the ones that are crying out before the Father to return back to Yahuwah, instead they want to go around just giving prophetic word. But instead of bringing the people to the place of repentance to turn back to the Father and to the Father's ways, what are they teaching the people? What are they prophesying? What are they saying? They prophesy falsely because it's just another vision and another dream and how I'm going to be the, 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 this blessed people. But yet at the end of the day, there's nothing that they speak about repentance and turning people back to the ways of the Father, coming back to his ways, coming back to his commands, coming back to his righteous right rulings. The priests are supposed to teach about Yahuwah. And what are they teaching? Knowledge that puffs people up. What are the priests teaching? What are the pastors teaching? What are they teaching? Are they teaching the ways of Abba Yahuwah? Teaching the people his Torah? Teaching the people his ways? What are they about? So how sad it is that it stops with this. And once again we see false prophets. Priests that rule by their own hand because they're not filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah. They are leading the people astray because it's become about gain. It's all about gain. The prophets have been about gain and the, and the priests have been about gain. And therefore, they and my people have loved it so. So you see, the Father will hand us over to the things that we want to listen to that tickles our ears because we don't really want a hard word or anything that's harsh in order for us to repent. Because we don't want to hear a hard word. We want to hear everything that's soft in our ears. So may Abba bless you all as we continue this time of counting the Omar. May Abba bless you. Shalom, shalom.